What's going on, everyone? Dustin Zanger with Creating the Difference. Today, I'm here with CEO Ronald Hicklin with Creating the Difference. What's going on, Ron? Man, today has been a pretty crazy day, Dustin. Uh, I'm glad we're able to jump on here and chat for a little bit, though. Yeah, I mean, last week in our talk, we said it was a crazy week in bowling, and it just got a little crazier today uh, with the new announcement uh, in regards to the Storm Spectre, and we're going to get into uh, some details on that, talk about uh, the article that USBC put out, uh, Storm's post, as well as um, sort of, some sort of background in regards to the testing procedure when it comes to uh, bowling ball hardness. Uh, we got the article up here that USBC posted today, um, and we can start talking about that article. Um, you want to jump in on that? Yeah, I mean, basically, for people that don't know, basically, uh, you know, USBC did a lot of testing on some Storm Spectre bowling balls and just found that they're no longer in compliance. Um, and as a result of that, they pulled the certification uh, for uh, the Spectre bowling balls effective today, which is March uh, the 14th of 2020. So basically, they pulled it out and they kind of gave a little bit of an explanation why. Uh, if you want to read the whole document, obviously, you can do that. But the, the TRDR, the TLDR is that. Um, basically, they found a significant percentage of bowling balls that did not meet the 73D hardness specification during their random checks in the field. And basically, um, what they do is they get some bowling balls in, they do some checks, and then if those bowling balls aren't, uh, uh, they don't qualify, they don't pass, they'll get some more bowling balls in and do some additional checks. And basically, they kind of state here that, you know, they've got a manual and the manual has got some specific rules. And it basically says that ball approval can be revoked if the process capability shows the model has a greater than a 5% defects or 50,000 out of a million, which is called defects per million opportunities, outside of any spec. So it doesn't necessarily have to be hardness. Any specification would be enough to pull the uh, approval for a bowling ball. <clears throat> and basically what they said was is that when they did their statistical analysis specifically of the Storm Spectre ball, it indicated that they had a defect rate of 80 of 98.6%, which is a projection. So what that means is that based on the balls that they tested, they believe that um, of the balls that were that were going to be produced, that 98.6% of those balls would be outside of USBC's hardness specification limit. And they took, looked at different batches, um, different areas of the country uh, where the balls were shipped to, to try to help make sure that they had a really good a better understanding of what they were getting into. And when it was all said and done, they said, hey, these balls aren't going to pass. We're going to kick them out. Uh, you're not going to be able to have these balls approved, which creates a lot of uh, a lot of disruption, honestly. Um, you can also see that there are also penalties as a result of that for a storm. Um, they're going to be placed on a probationary status with USBC for one year, and they're also subject to an $8,000 fine. Now, that doesn't really, really – encompass everything right because storm is going to have to do something now with all these bowling balls that have been sold that now have been determined to be uh illegal yeah i mean there's there is a lot of a lot of information in this article uh that stick out i mean the to me the the 98.6 percent of the balls um are projected to be outside of the usbc's hardness specification that that really stuck out to me um did you have any any thoughts on that? I mean, what that just means is that when they tested the balls that they got, uh, that you know, basically all of them were uh, were going to be under the spec. And as a result of that, when they when they when they look at what that means, they project that all of these balls that are going to be tested would be bad. I mean, obviously they don't test thousands and thousands of balls, so yeah. they get a good sample, and then they check that sample, and then they check another sample, and they use the combination of all the balls they tested to project what they what they determined to be the defect rate. I mean, it, it can only be 5%. This is almost 100%. So that means they're pretty confident that these balls in the field are just not going to be legal product. Right, right. Um. So going off of that, Storm made a post today uh, that read, we're notified this morning that the USBC has revoked approval of the Storm Spectre bowling ball and removed it from its list of bowling balls approved for USBC competition effective March 14th. Uh, and it goes on to read that um, they're, they're still working on a solution uh, to get, if you have a Spectre or if you own a Spectre, a brand new one, um, that they're still working on a situation or a process to make sure uh, that you get taken care of. 
And in the past, we've seen something like this happen before uh, a few years ago uh, with another brand. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty confident that Motive is going to, or excuse me, Storm is going to step up and take care of their customers um, when it comes to the Spectre. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to wait and see what they end up doing. Obviously, this did happen, I think it was 2015, to Motive, a similar situation where they had bowling balls that were in the field and then got rejected. So it'll be interesting to see what Storm ends up uh, deciding to do to rectify the situation. Yep. Yeah, so that's available on uh, Storm's Facebook page. I'm, I'm sure they're going to post more updates um, on that page as well. Uh, so we can jump right into the overview of testing uh, when it comes to hardness in a bowling ball, these uh, standard operating procedures are available on USPC's website. Uh, we'll have a link available as well in the description below. Um, so we can jump right in here um, with our hardness testing. Well, before we do that, I want to touch base on a few things here. So uh, if you're a consumer and you have one of these bowling balls, what you need to do is you just need to set that bowling ball to the side. Don't bring it to league. You don't use it anymore. And then wait until we hear back from Storm. Storm's going to say something, um, and they're going to allow uh, uh, people to, to, you know, they're going to offer a solution. So wait until we get the solution first before everybody jumps to conclusions as in terms of, you know, what we should do or what they should do with their bowling ball. You know the bowling ball is illegal. Put it to the side and just wait. Storm's going to give – Storm's going to find a solution – what they have a solution, then we can begin to decide on, you know, what the right move is for the individual people. But I think, you know, I saw a lot of a lot of people really jumping to conclusions um, on social media. You just got to be cognizant. You don't want to do that. Um, you want to make sure that we give, you know, Storm, who just got caught off guard by this, obviously, and and needs to figure out a solution and give them time to do that. And then, you know, then we'll begin to address it. I will also tell you that uh, if you're a member of Team CTD, if you're on our staff, uh, we're going to do we're going to look to see if we can do something in addition to what Storm does to help ease some of this burden. You know, we don't like when these things happen. Nobody does. It's not good uh, for anybody. And USBC is just doing their job. So um, if there's something that we can do to help ease some of the pain uh, of this situation, we're going to try to do that as well. We did that exact same thing with the Jekyll situation when something when that came up, uh, we offered some solutions in and above what was presented to help make things a little bit easier for the consumer. And for our staffers, we're going to do that exact same thing as well. Awesome. Yeah, we don't want to um, – spreading rumors is not good, especially we don't have all the information. Um, so like Ron said, um, stay patient. They'll definitely come out with a resolution uh, for this. So in regard to this, I mean, like I said, like you said, this is uh, available on uh, their website. It's called an SOP or standard operating procedure. What this is meant to do, this is meant to advise anybody really who's looking at it, what USBC does in order to check, the, in order to test something. Why these are so important is because if you're a bowling ball manufacturer and you don't have the same procedure or the same process that they have, you may get different results. And your results in USBC being the governing body, they get the final say. So you need to make sure when you check a ball and you send it to them and they check a ball that you're getting the same kind of information, the same kind of numbers. So that's really what this is all about. That's, that's what this form is for, is to inform people exactly what they do. And we're not going to go through each individual thing here because that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, most people probably don't even care. But those that do care, the first thing is, see this doc, see this right here? You need to have one of these types of durometer and durometer setups in order to be able to do the test. I've seen a lot of people go around saying, well, I've got a handheld durometer and I've got this and I've got that. Well, the problem with that is, is unless you have this durometer, this setup right here, you're really not even in a position to really even be close uh, to being able to check bowling balls on a consistent manner. Um, I, I know that because one, we actually have one of these durometers and we bought it from the company that manufactured it, which happens to be like 20 minutes away from uh, my, my house in Illinois. So I asked, I said, well, why do you have why do you have that the top piece, that silver piece is a weight? And then the handle is what you'll pull down on. Well, what's funny, not funny, what's interesting is when you pull on the handle, the only um, thing that's putting weight on the durometer to push into the ball is that weight. And that's so that you can get a much more consistent, repeatable reading. If you had that durometer in your hand and you're pressing it into the bowling ball by hand, you can get a lot of different pressures, which is going to create a lot of different variations in that durometer. So that's not a good way to try to check bowling balls. So that's specifically why there is this specific stand that USBC recommends that, that manufacturers have in order to be able to check the durometer of a bowling ball. Scroll down a little bit, please, Dustin. 
So they're giving you the whole setup and the whole procedure. I'm not going to go over all of this, um, but this is something that is available. So we'll, we'll keep scrolling down on how to be able to check a bowling ball. Um, a couple of interesting things right there. We'll, we'll take a note. Scroll up just a little bit, please. Uh, one, the temperature, right? So they have an infrared uh, thermometer because temperature does impact hardness or softness. If a bowling ball is, is uh, at a higher temperature, the softness will go down, right? So they want to make sure that you're in a range. And it says, uh, you know, we're going to check the bowling ball and it needs to be within a specific range. And if it's not, you basically got to wait until it gets in that range. We'll scroll down a little bit more. Um, that's still more procedural type stuff. Uh, here's something that's kind of interesting. So they say, uh, repeat test procedure steps three to, through nine until 10 different locations on the ball have been tested. So what that means is they're testing 10 different locations on the bowling ball, and then they're going to take an overall average of those 10 readings. So you may have a soft spot, you may have a hard spot, but at the end of the day, it's an average of 10 readings. So that's really important um, to, to note because um, it isn't just a couple of spots or it isn't just one location. It's 10 locations all over the ball, and it's meant to give you uh, a different um, a different range. Because here's something else that's kind of interesting. Colors matter. And it says it says a good sample of a bowling ball should include a wide, wide range of locations around the bowling ball that includes all the colors of the bowling ball because color can impact hardness, in case you didn't know that. All right, uh, keep going. It says if a bowling ball um, uh, the results are below are below the minimum, then there's a few things you got to do to kind of make sure that your calibration, that you're in calibration, that they're in calibration. So that's kind of what they're talking about right here. We'll scroll down a little more. And they also tell you, you know, here's the repeat procedure. Here's, we have a, a block that they'll test on. And then it says the durometers are calibrated every six months by a professional calibration company. So they're giving everybody the opportunity to know what they do and know how they do it. Now, when it comes to, uh, you know, looking at some of the information here, one of the things that's kind of interesting is it says, that says the results should fall within a range specified with a test block, normally plus or minus two of the listed value of the test block. What that's telling you is, is they have a block that is a certain hardness. And when you test the test block, you should be plus or minus two uh, points um, on the on the durometer relative to what the test block is supposed to be. So that gives you some information there because that means that there's some variation that can play um, into the durometer reading, um, and that can impact you know that can impact a lot of things. It can impact what passes, what doesn't pass. It can impact a hardness. Uh, readings that are valid and invalid. So there's a lot there. But nonetheless, USBC is giving you, they're, they're outlaying all the information for you. So they're telling people how to, they're telling specifically manufacturers, but everybody can look at it. It's a public document. But they're telling everybody what they do to check balls in the first place. As the governing body, their responsibility is to try to ensure the integrity of the sport. So they're supposed to check bowling balls. And if they find something that doesn't pass, they got to do something about it. So, you know, it's not really their fault, right? It's just them doing their job. And that's one of the benefits that we as uh, members of USBC get uh, is by having them, uh, allowing them to be able to do their job. Um, and then, you know, honestly, I don't think that Storm did anything here intentionally. I think this is kind of just a situation that kind of caught them off guard, too. So, you know, they're going to do what they can to rectify the situation. That's the manufacturer's job, to rectify the situation um, as quickly as possible and, and ease the pain as quickly as possible for the consumers and, you know, make some process changes to make sure it doesn't happen again. That's all you really can do. Um, so I just kind of wanted to touch on a few things that, that are interesting there. And I'm also going to tell you, um, you know, we at CTD, because we got some of this technology um, because we have some equipment, we're going to do some testing too. We're going to you know, we're going to share that information. I think it's cool for consumers to that do want to understand a little bit more about how these things work to be able to see that. So um, in the next couple of days, we're going to put some some cool stuff together and, and just kind of educate some people on hardness, on uh, durometers, on performance. I mean, kind of just put a, a little bit of extra piece of information out there because as an education company, we feel that that's part of our responsibility to educate people as much as possible so that they can have the, the, the best information and at least and at least more information to make sound decisions on whatever topic it may be. Definitely. Definitely. Yep. So we will have uh, a link available in the description uh, so you can get access to all of the information that we talked about here. Um, and if you want already please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we really appreciate it. Leave us a comment. Uh, what you thought of the video. If you want to see any additional content, let us know. We always read the comments, good or bad, and we appreciate any feedback um, regards to the channel. Um, you have anything else you want to add? 
Man, I just want to tell you, you know, uh, you know, I feel bad for Storm. Uh, I feel bad for USBC. I feel bad for bowling as a result of this situation. But I think that everybody involved is going to do whatever they can to help help ease the pain and help get us over this hump and get us past this situation. And I think bowling on the end of it will be better for it. You know, a lot of times people, you know, they knock uh, USBC because, well, what am I paying, you know, this due for? Well, this is one reason. You're paying a due so that they can help ensure the integrity of the sport. Um, people are like, well, you know, they're going to knock uh, the ball company. Well, you know, in this case, you know, Storm's going to do what they can to fix the situation. They were made aware of a situation. They're going to rectify the situation. We'll move forward. You know, there's a lot of things that go on in bowling um, that that are good, too. You know, we need to make sure that we focus on a lot of the good things. It was pretty cool if you didn't watch um, the uh, the World Championship uh, show um, yesterday. But, man, that was pretty cool and fun to watch, to be able to watch these pros battle it out for a lot of money and for a title. So if you didn't get to watch that, please do. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're a lot about trying to – promote the positive side of bowling. So as a company and as a, as a, as a staff, that's kind of what we like to do. So, you know, share some positive stories uh, on Facebook, you know, share some positive stories on your Instagram. People like hearing that too. We don't want to just focus on the negative when there's a whole lot of positive going on in the sport of bowling. Yep. Yep, definitely. So appreciate everybody tuning in um, and we will talk to you all very